All right, this is your lecture on Nixon. Um, we've already covered his um, involvement and role in Vietnam, so this will mostly focus on um, his involvement with the Cold War um, in other nations besides Vietnam. It won't address any of his domestic stuff, um, especially like Watergate and things like that. That'll be in the next unit. Um, so besides Vietnam coming to an end, um, Nixon had a pretty big impact on the Cold War in our relationship with China and in Russia for a couple reasons. So um, during his presidency, the big economic problem he had to deal with was stagflation. This is a unique combination of when the country is going through a recession um, coupled with high inflation. So normally when you have a recession, you also face declining prices. Um, that was not what happened. Again, we had a, a recession with high inflation. So unemployment was going up on top of prices. Um, and this was caused in part by um, a lot of the, the huge rampant spending on Vietnam, also the Great Society, um, and some other factors. But um, one thing that he hoped that would contribute to that to increase our trade, our exports, um, and deal with some of the unemployment um, was to ease our relationship, our cold relationship with both Russia and China, China especially. Um, he really wanted to open up um, to trade with China. And so that easing of the, the relationship, so the thong of the re relationship that we had cut off with China because it had become communist, is called détente. Détente is just a French word for kind of an easing of, of relations. So um, this just doesn't, you don't know, snap your fingers and all of a sudden have a relationship with another a communist nation that you have um, not been having a relationship with for many years. Um, and so it started with kind of these overtures of the U.S., and the China becoming better friends, or uneasy friends at least. Um, and so it famously kind of started with this ping pong match in Forrest Gump. They, they pretend that Forrest Gump was there. But anyway, it started with the, the ping pong teams from the US and, and China playing each other. It then led to exchange it, um, them sending us pandas. And we still have this program today at the National Zoo. The pandas are from China. When they have babies, those babies are sent back to China, and when the babies are born, the, the first ladies of both countries come together and name them. So it's kind of an ongoing part of that, that initial detente is that we still have this kind of unique tradition that we do together as far as the, the pandas at the National Zoo. Um, so those things eased up to the president actually visiting, and this was a huge deal, so the president visiting a communist nation for the first time. Um, and again, this all led to an opening of trade with China um, that didn't have immediate revolt results, on, especially on the inflation, um, but it did increase manufacturing, it did increase trade. Um, a few months later, Nixon also travels to Russia for the first time, again, U.S. president going to Russia. Um, and what comes from that is both trade relations, but a um, bigger, more important one was the SALT-1 Treaty. This is Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. Um, and what this did is both sides agreed to reduce their long-range missiles, their intercontinental ballistic missiles. Um, so both reduced the arsenals that they had. It also dealt with um, bans on certain type of tests of weapons. So again, it was a huge step forward towards cooling down um, the nuclear arms race and is a really a great aspect of Nixon's presidency. Um, the last part of Nixon's presidency shows the significance that um, U.S. focus was moving slowly, was moving away from Asia and Russia as part of the Cold War and moving um, more heavily focused towards the Middle East as it would especially into the 90s and 2000s. But um, Henry Kissinger was... Um, Nixon's Secretary of State, um, and he engaged in, he's a phenomenal Secretary of State, um, but he engaged in what is known as shuttle diplomacy, and this is just where someone, any um, representative, um, is an intermediary in some kind of conflict, and they're shuttling, traveling between the two sides and helping them negotiate. And so he was instrumental um, in helping um, the Middle East, they were especially there were a lot of tensions between Israel and its surrounding neighbors, um, and he was instrumental in um, brokering peace agreements and, and just negotiating there. And so he was very famous for that. Um, unfortunately, um, because of our support for Israel, OPEC, um, they control the pricing and supply of oil from the Middle East. 
Um, they were upset with us because of our support for Israel, and so they embargoed us, meaning, so normally we're embargoing other nations. They embargoed us and stopped selling us oil. This didn't mean all of our oil was gone. We get a lot of our oil from Canada, for example, and elsewhere. Um, but it was a big, a significant enough chunk of our oil that it led to what you can see are famous pictures of these massive lines of people lining up for oil or gasoline or gas stations running out of oil. Um, but what it did is it led to Nixon launching um, what he claimed would be his version of kind of the Manhattan Project or Kennedy's version of the space race, where he challenged America to project independence and he wanted America to become um, free of its reliance on foreign oil by the year 2000. We obviously don't achieve this, but um, he launched this with kind of the same enthusiasm and saying America could do this. Um, it led to investment in uh, mass transit. Um, it, reduced, it led to um, increased uh, fuel, efficient, fuel efficiency standards, um, more nuclear power plants. Um, but it, it also led to things like oil rationing. So if you had an odd number license plate, you can only get gas on some days and even was a different day. There wasn't traffic. You couldn't get oil, uh, gas on the weekends. Um, so that, again, that was supposed to limit people traveling long distance on the weekends, etc. So um, unfortunately, um, not a huge uh, success. One year later, when OPEC lifted the embargo um, in 74, uh, most Americans, once the supplies were free-flowing again, they, they didn't care about the conservation. Um, but it did lead to um, an increase in the number of nuclear power plants and some of those fuel efficiency standards um, uh, that kind of started us on that trend towards more efficient cars um, are some of the things we get from that. We're obviously still very, very reliant on foreign oil, and so that part was never achieved. But um, it was looked at as something... A uh, really good challenge that Nixon put before us that we unfortunately did not rise to. But um, so that is it for the Nixon lecture for today.